VP, um, VP at Digitus for experiential technology. He has been a part of one of the coolest AR apps I've seen, JK Moonshot, Moonshoot. So I'm sure you're going to be seeing a lot of JFK Moonshoot. So I'm sure you're going to be hearing a lot about it and how the process was coming up. Welcome everyone. I'm Keith Soljasic, VP Group Director of Experiential Technology at Digitas, the connected marketing agency. And I'm here to talk to you about the intersection of XR and customer experience and how you can tap both. For brands, putting customers first is always good business. That customer experience, those interactions drive the overall perception of your company. It's every touch point from the point of initial consideration through the purchase journey, the point of sale, and then through ownership or consumption. And this is a tough thing to nail. Only one in five companies deliver great or even good customer experience. In truth, it's all on the line when it comes to good CX. And as you can see, even one basis point in the CX index, the ROI growth is tangible. So how can XR move the needle? Can we tap into emerging technology and immersive experiences to gain that elusive basis point? So before you dive into the deep end with XR, you need to ask yourself these questions. Is your emerging technology accessible? Is it in demand? Does it drive conversion? And if the answer to these is, is correct, then you're in good shape. So let's start with augmented reality. And this is where you're over, overlaying digital content into the real world. So for access, this is great. You've got 68.7 million people who use AR at least once a month. For demand, 75% of consumers expect retailers to offer an augmented reality experience. And lastly, convert. 72% of AR users said they purchased something they didn't even plan to buy because of an augmented reality experience. That's three checks. So what are the best uses or applications of XR for customer experience? You know, starting off, you wanna be able to visualize. Take that product and put it in their homes or put it in their space. This is a really great use case for auto, or durable goods or consumer packaged goods where I can see what that product's gonna look like. Next, be able to personalize that. So just because I can see that car, I wanna be able to choose the color. I wanna choose the rims. Uh, you know, in this example for Warby Parker, I can put those glasses on my face, see what they look like, and I can feel confident that I'm gonna buy those glasses and I know what they're gonna look like. And then lastly, experience. This is immersing your customers deep into the brand to leave that lasting impression. So let's take a deeper dive into a campaign that we launched in 2019. JFK Moonshot was a collaboration between the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum and Digitas, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon mission. Our assignment was to help the JFK Library celebrate that 50th anniversary of the moon landing and connect a new generation to JFK's legacy. You'll recall this indelible image from 1969 of Neil Armstrong being the first man to walk on the moon. But what a lot of people don't actually recall, and this is surprising, is the bold declaration that President Kennedy made in 1962 at Rice University, declaring that the US would put a man on the moon within 10 years. So, in 1969, customer experience for the moon mission would probably look something a little bit like this. But flash forward to 2020, and it may look something like this, albeit now social distance standing six feet apart. So our goals were simple. First, build awareness of JFK's legacy. Second, own a piece of the converse conversation around the anniversary taking place around the world. And lastly, and most importantly, drive attendance to the museum. So to do this, we created JFK Moonshot, more than just an augmented reality app. 
JFK Moonshot is a tribute and a celebration to human achievement, a faithful recreation of history that made its own history 50 years later. With JFK Moonshot, we meticulously recreated the Apollo 11 mission. We bridged the gap between the in-person experience at the museum and the at-home experience, giving everyone lots to work with, all while faithfully honoring the mission in painstaking detail. So in JFK Moonshot, you'll see a real-time simulation of the entire mission from launch to landing, packed with learning experiences and mini games for endless hours of immersion. We dug deep into the NASA and JFK archives to pack the experience with footage and recordings. We did a true excavation of the history and brought to you in all of its augmented reality glory. And as you can see here, you're able to track along with the mission in real time. So when the 50 years later, when the rocket launched in augmented reality, you're able to scrub along this timeline and view the milestone stones along the way. So when the rocket launched, it launched in AR. And when, and when that lander landed on the moon 50 years later, you were there to watch it in augmented reality. And if you, you might remember, we showcased the very first public demo of the app at Augmented World Expo 2019. And some of you may have been in the audience. Those were simpler times. Uh, so the campaign was a huge success for the library. And I'm gonna play a video here uh, encapsulating the case study for the campaign. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. since the greatest technological achievement in human history. The JFK Library used 21st century technology to take people back to that amazing launch without leaving Dorchester. You can see the first ever full-scale AR simulation of the Saturn V rocket. The entire event live streamed to millions. T minus 40 seconds before the launch. Make sure your phones are ready at three, two, one. Look time. We have a look time. This was amazing. This was beyond what I ever could have expected. It's a once in a lifetime experience and to be able to recreate it, it's pretty magical. So Bonsai Baby is live streaming and in the next five days, you can check in as much as you want. Oh, we landed! We're on the moon! Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. One we are unwilling to postpone. And one we intend to win. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Boy, that video still gives me chills. Uh, so yes, a massively successful campaign for a brand that leaned into XR in a big way. So during the course of the campaign, they reversed this national nationwide trend of declining museum attendance. We had over 230 million global impressions on the campaign. 
an 11% attitudinal lift among millennials. That was really key. 140,000 app downloads exceeding our wildest expectations, but most importantly, a 5% attendance increase, the most year over year in quite a long time. So for my brand, and if we lean in, if you lean into XR, how will you know if your strategy worked? Well, first start here. Did XR increase the time spent with your brand? And on JFK, that was an emphatic yes. Uh, minutes and minutes of time spent in the app engaging with the brand translated into real results. Did you capture their attention? Were you able to give them something to share? And again, on, on JFK Moonshot, we saw hundreds and hundreds of user-generated content come in, sharing around. And if you can give one person a memorable experience using XR, you can give many people a memorable experience using XR. and They'll share it and they'll love that. And then lastly, was it memorable? In customer experience, it all boils down to this. Did your customer have a pleasant experience that left them with a, po with a positive impression of your brand? Are you leaving them wanting more and creating that demand? And if you're using XR as part of your customer experience, the answer is an emphatic yes. So I wanna thank you all for watching. Uh, you can contact me if you have any questions about XR customer experience or just XR in general. Uh, I can be reached on LinkedIn. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. And I encourage you all to go out and download the JFK Moonshot app and give it a try for yourself. So thank you, Augmented World Expo. Everyone out there, stay safe. And we'll see you soon. Unbelievable, Keith. Two 230 global impressions. That's a huge win. No, nobody was going There's to the museum. Couple so we, more we brought the museum, <laughs> museum to them. It's it's actually a great Absolutely. strategy for every company today, right? Um, yeah, wow. and in fact, XR just allows that, right? We can bring you any experience right into your home. Love it. <sighs> Absolutely. Um, and I love how you broke down the process of how you guys created the app too. Um, we have, we do have a question. Um, can you, uh, Consuela Murano said, amazing project. Can you let us know the budget where people using it through the museum app? Yes. So although I would love to share the budget with you all, unfortunately that's confidential, uh, <laughs> but this was a <laughs> this was a bespoke app that we created just for this experience. Uh, the JFK Library and Museum didn't didn't have an app that would be compatible um, with the Moonshot experience, um, so it was a bespoke app just for this. And okay. um, would would love to share privately potentially um, some of the budgets uh, if we engaged in in conversation. <laughs> um. Yeah, you know, this one isn't a question, but I just thought it was really just what a, what a comment for something that you created. Uh, John Westra said, I watched the 1969 moonshot in person as a kid sitting on my father's shoulders. I used it to describe my experience to my grandchildren this morning in advance of the planned Launch America launch. Your customers were wowed. So it's very interesting that he was there and now he's sharing how he was there with what you've created. What was it like when you were creating, you know, you were, the, I think you were the first ever um, full scale AR creation of the Saturn V launch on its landing pay, pad. Um, you know, when you're always like the first person to do something, what were some of the challenges that go on when you're creating something so new and novel? Yeah, John, uh, you share, John shared some of the same sentiments that our team did when we were visualizing what this project could potentially be and the impact it would have on uh, people around the world. And we thought back of that echo between 1969, 1968 and the present day. And we said, hey, you're pro probably watching this on the same size screen if you were using an iPad today in or in 2019 that everyone was huddled around that TV uh, back in 1969. So, um, you know, we, we just saw that awesome echo there between the two experiences, but 
imagining the evolution of the technology flashing forward 50 years later, what you can do with that same size screen and what kind of experiences we can bring into your home. Um, it's just incredible. Absolutely. What, what were some of the salute? How did you create, you created this process, very simple process as you went through it, not simple, but um, were there any bumps in the road? while that process was going where you wanted to make sure like having focus groups to make sure that you did make this creation to what it should be because it was such a big deal it was the jfk moonshot what was that like yeah um so shout out to our partners at unit nine who we partnered uh with on the development of this app uh because the path to get to the on-premise experience was a was a very bumpy one um, you know, we had, we wanted to have this full scale one-to-one -one replica of the rocket, but if you're actually going to see that entire rocket inside of a phone screen or inside of an iPad, you've got to have a considerable amount of distance between your, you and where that rocket virtually is. Well, mm -hmm. what's beyond the JFK Presidential Library and Museum is Boston Harbor, uh, a whole lot of water. And so trying to do a positionally tracked uh, virtual asset over water was an incredibly challenging task. Uh, we were out, uh, out there measuring and uh, prototyping in the middle uh, of the bitter cold of the Boston winter, uh, but, but a lot of credit to the development team. They figured out how to position that rocket. And wow. so it would have a good experience and wouldn't jump around on you. So that was, that was a big challenge uh, as we kind of tried to figure out how to how to get that full scale. What are some of the questions you ask or or that you when you're talking with a customer to create an experience so big? How do you start the conversation, I guess? Well, I think, you know, we always start with what are you trying to achieve? Um, and, and what at the end, how do you want to move people or influence people or, or what's the end goal? And with JFK Moonshot, you know, this was simple. Let's do two things. One, let's connect this incredible legacy to President Kennedy and really reinforce that. Use this moment in time to amplify that. Uh, and then two, you know, need to drive foot traffic to the museum. We want to we want to get people exploring because, uh, you know, when we went and we started really digging in and learning in the archives, the, the JFK Library, presidential, the Presidential Library and Museum is incredible. It really is a museum and there's so much to explore. And we wanted to make sure people understood that, that there's more than just this one moment uh, in his legacy. Absolutely. Um, E.C. Azuz said, how did the team plan for unique engagement through social media? Was it different from other non-XR projects at Digitus? And would also love to hear about any unique customer behaviors you might have noticed. Sure. Well, what we were hoping for, we were lucky enough to have happen. We were hoping for an incredible amount of social media engagement tied to the hashtag JFK Moonshot uh, and you know Apollo 11. And we, in this campaign in particular, it was very concentrated on a single day. So we had a small window uh, to succeed. It all had to happen on launch day for the most part. So what we did was we really amplified our media. Um, we, you know, thanks to uh, AMC theaters, they carried our television spot in front of every movie uh, leading up to the launch. So we got a ton of earned media in that way. Uh, and then the press started picking up. And so I think combining sort of the traditional media with the digital media was a huge uh, win in this case. And in, in this case, and, and I mentioned this in my talk, um, we gave we gave people something to do and something to, to create with. And I think that's where, you know, largely we are online is trying to make unique creations uh, and, and AR is driving that in a huge way. So the fact that you could plant your rocket in your backyard and have your kids run around it while it blasted off, people found incredible value in that to create content and then post that. And then that was happening uh, not and not only here, but around the world. So um, it was it was what really drove the success of the campaign was the creativity that we saw uh, from people using the application. Unbelievable. Thank you so much, Keith. 
230 million global impressions. That's unbelievable. <laughs> so thank you again for yes. joining us and sharing your wealth of knowledge. Yeah, and thanks again for everyone for watching who's out there.